Uh, well, they do it to women more than monkeys, I'll tell you that. Um, so don't feel so bad. Um, and they put these monkeys on estradiol plus Provera or estradiol plus natural progesterone. After four weeks, they injected a substance that causes the vessels to constrict, so basically cut off their blood flow into the heart muscles. And they found the ones that got Provera and with the estrogen instead of the progesterone would have died uh, within minutes if they didn't give them a reversing drug. And while in contrast to the progesterone, they, it basically opened up the vessels, so they didn't have that problem. So coronary artery spasm was induced by, by the Provera, but not the progesterone. So that's what happens. You get um, any problem and the vessels constrict, you're going to have a problem. And again, with the cardiac ischemia, I mean lack of blood flow. They compared the effects of estrogen and progesterone with estrogen and Provera on exercise-induced myocardial ischemia, so low blood uh, flow, low oxygen, uh, chest pain, in postmenopausal women with coronary artery disease. It was found that the exercise time to ischemia was increased with natural progesterone, so they could walk much farther before they got any chest pain. So, quote, they state, these results imply that choice of progestin in women at higher cardiovascular risk requires careful consideration. Provera is expected to increase the risk of heart attack and stroke while progesterone is not. 1997. You know, why wasn't anyone paying attention? <coughs> Coronary artery dilatation produced by natural progesterone but not Provera increases blood flow of the heart and decreases the risk of heart attack and stroke. Again, progestin versus progesterone. A series of studies by Adams, he looked at the cardioprotective effects of estrogen and progesterone, again, versus estrogen and Provera. So the estrogen and progesterone combination resulted in a 50% reduction in the atherosclerotic plaque in the coronary arteries, 50% less heart disease. But when you added Provera, almost all the cardioprotective effect was reversed. So no, no benefit. The, the Provera just negated any benefit from estrogen. So this atherosclerosis in 1990 and um, 1997. So Provera is a unique in that it's shown to promote thrombus clot, so the risk of stroke and heart attack. What is a stroke and heart attack? It's a clot. So you want to prevent clot. <coughs> Progesterone does not have that effect. Again, these studies here. Let's look at diabetes. Provera and synthetic progestin is also shown to even double the amount of insulin resistance. So I wonder why we're having so much problem with type 2 diabetes. So when you give progesterone and estrogen together, no problem. Add Provera. There goes your insulin. Insulin tells the body to store fat, so you gain weight, increased risk for cancer, increased risk for heart attack. A number of different, different studies have also shown that progesterone by itself or in combination with estrogen will inhibit atherosclerotic plaque. So you get an opposite effect. You want to prevent it or induce it. So synthetic progestins, completely opposite again. They'll actually in inhibit the, the, uh, all the positive effects. So got a paper by Clarkson uh, published in the Journal of Reproductive Medicine entitled Progestins and Cardiovascular Disease. So the, they looked at the um, effects of Provera um, in combination with comparison to progesterone. They summarize, a particular interest is the attenuating effects of Provera has on the cardiovascular benefits in postmenopausal estrogen treatment. Provera reduces the dilatory effect of estrogens we just talked about, increases the progression of coronary artery atherosclerosis, so heart disease, accelerates low-density lipoprotein in the plaque, increases thrombotic potential, causes clot, stroke, heart attack, and promotes insulin resistance. These effects may be largely limited to Provera not sure of the other progestins. Again, why were we ever using this? Here it is, years before the Women's Health Initiative study, really do they do this in, in medical journals? I mean, right here, the data strongly suggests caution in the use of Majashi progesterone acetate. And not too hard to, to pick that out. So this study continued, uh, again, bullied displays the strongest <coughs> caution use of majority progesterone acetate, and lists their summary as these studies taken together provide a basis of, for concern, not about all progestins, but about Provera. So it's, again, no surprise that the Women's Health in Initiative study found what it found. It's like, of course. Again, long before the Women's Health in Initiative study. And when you look here, you look at the different molecules. Here is estradiol. You look at compared to testosterone, you know, basically opposite effects in a lot of ways. Look at the difference. Just one little part here. You just add a little bond there, and look at the huge difference that it makes in the effect. Progesterone, same thing here, but just a little bit different here. Just add a, a little bond here. And you look at progesterone versus medroxy progesterone acetate, Provera. Look at all these extra pieces on there. And why would you think it has the same effect? 
And it really, it, it got approved because it does protect the uterus. That's the only thing it has in common. Everything else is, is opposite. Progesterone prevents breast cancer. Progestins cause breast cancer. So there are substantial differences between the currently available progestins, both in chemical structure and the pharmacological profile. Some progestins are even lacking progestational activity. Some progestins don't even <laughs> work like progesterone at all. So it's important to consider these differences when hormone replacement is prescribed. European Menopausal Journal. Didn't make it over here. So drug differences. Even extremely small differences that we just shown um, can make very different effects. And there are many classes of drugs where the structures are almost identical. But when the problems with the drugs, they didn't say, oh, all the drugs are bad. They, sh they just basically eliminated that one drug. And they do that with you know, all the, the drugs in the market. But when it comes to hormones, they lump them all together. So like the statins, you know, Baycol was was basically caused death, but what happens is it one increases the use of Lipitor, you know, the calcium channel blocker. So all these medications were taken off the market, but no one blames the class, they blame the single, the, the single drug. Let's look at the, um, on cholesterol. Everyone's, you know, worried about their cholesterol. The large PEPI trial, 875 postmenopausal women were randomized, they received either Premarin, uh, Premarin or Premarin and Provera or Premarin and natural progesterone. It's a very good uh, comparison here. They demonstrate the superior effect of natural progesterone over Provera and more than doubled the positive effect on the cholesterol. The investigators were surprised um, by the superiority of the natural progesterone over synthetic. And the PEPI uh, investigator stated, I think the biggest surprise was certainly the HDL effect on micronized progesterone. Elizabeth Connor, cardiologist and PEPI investigator stated, if I were treating women, and particularly because she was worried about heart disease or because she had dyslipidemia, and low HDL cholesterol, I would probably see if she wanted to take micronized progesterone. I was quite impressed with the better effect. Well, who isn't at risk for heart disease? You say, oh, yeah, don't worry about it, you know. Um, Journal of American Medical Association, 1995. So again, well before the Women's Health Initiative study. The, uh, this doctor from the Department of Endocrinology and Preventive Medicine in uh, Paris, France, reviewed the scientific literature that compared, again, natural oral progesterone in common use progestin and published his uh, findings in the 1999 Journal of Clinical Therapeutics. He writes, quote, most commonly used synthetic progestins uh, have been associated with metabolic and vascular side effects in both experimental and human controlled studies. All, com all comparative studies to date conclude the side effects of synthetic progestins can be minimized or eliminated through the use of natural progesterone. So that's when people say, oh, there's no studies of natural hormones, so I can't, I can't recommend it. Um, and we can go on and on, um, you know, the review, 1999 review of the progestins versus progesterone by the Department of the Mayo Clinic. In this review entitled Micronized Progesterone, Clinical Indications and Comparing it with Current Treatments was published in Fertility and Sterility. The author summarized, a large body of evidence including the postmenopausal estrogen intervention suggests that the use of combined estrogen and micronized progesterone is optimal for long-term hormone replacement therapy. However, the use of progesterone-like hormones associated with a number of potential adverse reactions. So treatment with estrogen and progestin impairs glucose tolerance, so increases the risk for diabetes. The synthetic progestins also may attenuate the beneficial effects of lipid and cardioprotective effects of administered estrogen, so it blocks any good effects from estrogen. Because of potential adverse reactions, careful medical oversight is required if synthetic progestins are used during first trimester of pregnancy or by patients with diabetes, you know, hypertension, or, or high cholesterol. For the indication which oral delivery of synthetic progestins currently are used, the theoretical benefits of oral delivery of natural form of hormones are obvious. 